What I'll tell you in this video will change how you view metformin. I'll share seven secrets, seven facts about this drug, the most used worldwide for treating diabetes. So how does it work? How does it function in the body? Does it help with weight loss? Is metformin a good strategy for prediabetes to prevent diabetes? What are the side effects? What are the contraindications? Can it lower blood sugar too much, causing hypoglycemia? I'll cover all of this in today's video. So there are seven points. First, I'll explain how it works, what it does in your body. There are three main mechanisms. First, metformin acts on the liver, reducing glucose production. The liver produces sugar. Metformin goes there and decreases the sugar production. So your fasting blood sugar when you wake up will be more controlled. That's why many people get confused. Yeah, I didn't eat, went to bed, and glucose was fine. When I woke up without eating, glucose went up because the liver can produce sugar. So that's the first way it acts on the liver. The second area metformin works is the intestine. We're learning more about metformin's gut benefits. Metformin can reduce sugar absorption in the gut. This helps a lot. It's a major benefit. Third, it acts on muscles and cells, lowering insulin resistance. How does type 2 diabetes work? You make insulin, maybe too much, but it can't work. Metformin improves insulin function, reducing resistance. So that's how metformin works. Number two, Metformin for prediabetes. Is using metformin a good strategy to prevent diabetes? What are the prediabetes levels? I'll show two measurements. As viewers worldwide use millimoles per liter or milligrams per deciliter. This table will have both units so you can follow along no matter where you're watching from. We can diagnose prediabetes with three main tests. First is fasting glucose, measured at the lab after waking up with eight. 12 hours of fasting. For this test, glucose between 100 and 125 mgDL indicates prediabetes. Glycated hemoglobin, another test for prediabetes, ranges from 5.7% to 6.4%. This test's units are the same worldwide, so it's a universal measure. Another test available for prediabetes diagnosis is the one where you go to the lab, drink some glucose, wait two hours, and then take another glucose test to see how your body responded to check if you have insulin resistance. What are the results indicating prediabetes? Values between 140 and 199 milligrams per deciliter suggest prediabetes. We prefer using two tests for diagnosis because sometimes having a mild flu can slightly raise fasting blood sugar, or you might have taken medication that temporarily increased blood sugar like corticosteroids. So we prefer testing on two separate occasions. Now, can metformin be used at this stage? There was a study that looked into this. On one hand, they observed people taking metformin and others making lifestyle changes like diet and exercise. The group that made lifestyle modifications performed better. Metformin isn't used preventively despite some doctors prescribing it. The best approach is addressing the root cause of prediabetes. Number three is a secret, as many ask about this during appointments, revealing a bias against metformin. How can such a cheap, old substance still be the first choice for treating type 2 diabetes? In American Diabetes Association guidelines, metformin remains the top recommendation. Why is this the case if it's so inexpensive? Is an expensive drug better just because it costs more? I've been asked this question many times in my office, and the answer is no. Metformin is plant-derived and has been used since the Middle Ages. Europe has been using metformin, this active ingredient, this plant, for a long time. In the Middle Ages, it was used for patients who urinated frequently due to diabetes, called diabetic polyuria. We already know the side effects and contraindications. This is a positive point. Being old isn't a negative. We don't always need new drugs that just hit the market. That's not always the best option. With the patent expired, many can produce it, lowering costs. So it's a positive point. I don't see being cheap or old as negatives for a drug. On the contrary, it's very positive. Number four, does metformin cause weight loss? Another question you often ask, what did scientific studies on metformin and weight show? Studies found the effect is neutral. Some gain a bit, others lose a little weight. Overall, 
metformin has a neutral effect on weight. In specific cases, like with antipsychotics that increase weight, metformin has proven effective in helping control weight gain. So it can be a useful strategy depending on the patient's specific group, but generally its effect is neutral. The fifth secret concerns its side effects. There's an interesting tactic to avoid most of these effects. What are they? Mainly gastrointestinal, diarrhea, vomiting, bloating, and some patients report abdominal pain. These gastrointestinal symptoms, including nausea, can occur. Besides these, there are other effects and precautions we need to take with metformin, like exams with iodinated contrast, such as contrast-enhanced CT scans. You must stop taking metformin beforehand, so it's crucial to inform the staff performing the exam as you need to take this precaution. Otherwise, there's a risk of a serious condition called lactic acidosis. Another concern is for patients with liver failure when the liver doesn't function properly. But what if I have fatty liver? Well, just having fatty liver isn't a contraindication. It's when the liver stops working properly at a more advanced stage. And also when the kidneys don't function right, called kidney failure. Mild kidney failure, for example, isn't necessarily a contraindication. It's when the kidneys have lost a significant part of their function. Then it's a contraindication due to the risk of lactic acidosis. It's crucial to be careful about this. What about hypoglycemia? Is it a side effect? And the answer is no. Metformin is safe regarding hypoglycemia. It doesn't lower blood sugar too much. Those who've had hypoglycemia know how bad and dangerous it is for health. And metformin doesn't cause this. Many patients get this impression because they take other medications which do lower blood sugar and metformin gets lumped in with them. In this mix of medications, it often gets some of the blame. But in monotherapy, when metformin is used alone, this effect wasn't observed. How can we reduce these main and most common gastrointestinal effects? By using extended release medication, known as XR metformin, and taking it after meals. Just taking it after eating significantly reduces the frequency of side effects. That's why your doctor prescribed it to be taken after lunch or dinner. This is to minimize or even eliminate these gastrointestinal side effects. Were you curious about why you had to take it after meals? Ever heard it called the diabetics dessert? Someone once used that term. I found it quite interesting. So now you know. Number six is almost a secret, as many people aren't aware of it. Most diabetics are surprised when I tell them about this. Metformin can cause vitamin B12 deficiency. So, vitamin B12 levels need to be checked periodically. Often, patients come in thinking they have diabetic neuropathy due to changes in food sensitivity. But when I assess, it's not diabetes, but a side effect of metformin, B12 deficiency neuropathy. What are other signs and symptoms of B12 deficiency? B12 helps form the myelin sheath around neurons. Without B12, you may experience burning, numbness, and memory issues. B12 deficiency can even cause reversible dementia. It also plays a role in forming our blood cells, like red blood cells. Anemia, weakness, paleness, and fatigue can indicate B12 deficiency. Those on metformin should get regular checkups, especially if you have other risk factors, like being elderly. Elderly metformin users must check their B12 blood levels. As we age, our bodies often lose the ability to produce acid. This doesn't always happen, but affects 20 to 30% of the population. If you're on metformin with other risk factors, be extra careful. Often, test results show very low levels of this vitamin. Secret 7 is why metformin might not be effective, or why do you feel that metformin stops working after a while? It's not as effective, so you need to take other diabetes medications. Well, let's think about it this way. When you have insulin resistance due to increased fat tissue, insulin can't function properly. Metformin doesn't treat the root cause, but improves the mechanisms I mentioned. So initially, metformin can have a very impressive effect. But if you don't address the cause, like in pre-diabetes, what happens if you don't change? Over time, diabetes progresses, insulin resistance worsens, and metformin becomes less effective. You need to take more medications or increase the dose. That's why it's crucial to treat the root cause of diabetes, not just the symptoms. Don't just rely on medication alone. It's not enough. Always seek the underlying cause to act more effectively 
and use fewer drugs. One key aspect you need to be very mindful of is your diet. Do you know the best and worst foods for diabetics? If you're on metformin or have high blood sugar, I strongly recommend watching this video. In this video, I discuss the best and worst foods for people with diabetes. Take care and see you next time.